Well, how does this weld look like it's running? I think there's definitely some room for improvement. How about this one? It could be going a lot better as well. Now here, this is going pretty well, and the difference between these three is the amperage. Hey, welcome to the shop. Today we're gonna to be talking a little bit about how to set your amperage, and I'm often being asked, what amperage setting should I use for a given rod or a certain situation? And while it's really good to know those numbers, and you can look them up on charts, it gives you a good starting point, it's better to be able to read the puddle and recognize when you're running too low of an amperage, too high of an amperage, or when it's just right. But we're gonna take kind of a Goldilocks and the Three Bears approach. We're gonna run one that's too cold, run one that's running pretty well, and then one that's too hot. So you'll be able to learn to recognize the difference. For each of these, I'm gonna be using this 1 8th of an inch or 3.2 millimeter thick plate, and I'll be running some 3 seconds of an inch or 2.4 millimeter 7018 electrodes. With this electrode, the typical amperage range uh, would be somewhere around 65 to 95 or so amps, depending on the welding position that you're in and the thickness of your plate that you're running. Um, but we'll start off by turning the machine down to 55 amps. Now with the machine setting here, uh, I know it's gonna be on the low end just from experience. Now as I'm running this, the arc is wandering around and I'm having a really difficult time controlling my weld puddle. That's a pretty typical sign of running too low of an amperage. Also, at times the arc is trying to go out, so I'm having to pull back a little bit and really fight with it. One more thing to notice here is it's not very clear. Uh, there's not that clear distinction that I'd like between my weld puddle and the slag. So I'm really fighting my way along here to get these parts welded together. Let's take a look at how it turned out. Now, first of all, the slag is hard to chip off, especially for 7018. With 7018, the slag usually comes off pretty easily. Now with the slag chipped off, we can see that early on in this weld right here, the weld isn't even fused to both sides. And that's pretty common uh, when you're running too low of an amperage that your arc will wander on one side because what you get off of the welding arc is there's actually a force, an arc force that comes off the end. When you don't have enough amperage, you're not getting that force that you need to drive the weld down into the joint. This is especially common if you're welding 6013 electrodes, though you can see it happened here with this 7018, where it just fused to the one side. As I worked my way along, I was able to get some amount of control of this to be able to fuse between both plates. However, even through there, it's not very consistent and I uh, really don't have a lot of confidence in this weld joint when it ran like that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn up the machine to 75 amps and run one. Now I know from experience, this is right in the range that'll work. Now as I'm welding along here, you can see it's totally different. I have that nice symmetric weld pool working my way along. There's a clear, distinct line between my weld pool and the slag following behind it and everything's running in a lot easier. There's not a lot of spatter coming off of here and all I need to do is maintain that short arc length, good rod angle and consistent travel speed working my way along and I'm feeling pretty good about how this is gonna come out. Let's go ahead and look at the result here. So the slag, I did need to chip off a little bit. Sometimes it will peel, sometimes you still need to chip it. It depends on the brand of electrode as well as you know your particular joint situation and things. It's much more smooth, it's tied in down at the corners and there's not a lot of spatter on there. While it's not perfect, it's certainly acceptable for anything I'm gonna do. Let's go ahead and turn the machine clear up to 95 amps. Now this isn't out of bounds for this rod. However, on this thin a material, it is up a bit too high. Now welding along, it's still running pretty smoothly. However, I'm having to move pretty fast. And you know, travel speed and amperage go together. Right, for the same size weld, you can run a higher amperage and a higher travel speed, but there's a limit to that, and we've passed that limit here. I'm having to move fast. I can see my weld starting to melt through a little bit, and so that keeps me moving. And the problem there is that there's not enough time for that weld material to fill in all of the area that's been melted out. 
which leaves me a uh, high likelihood of having some undercut here, which is where there's a low spot next to the weld because you've melted out more area than you've filled back in as you weld along. Also, I'm getting quite a bit of spatter jumping up out of this weld pool. And at the end, I'm not really able to tie in the end of my weld very well because it's melting away so I don't have the control that I'd like. Let's take a look at the result here and you can see that spatter there on the bottom. Once again, the slag is a little bit difficult to chip off here, probably because I have some undercut that's trapping the slag in place. Now, once I have that chipped and brushed, if we take a look, you can see there definitely is some of that undercut. Overall, the weld is somewhat smooth and I have much more confidence in this than I do in the weld at the lower amperage but still could be a lot better. So hopefully that helps to be able to see what you're gonna be looking for when your amperage is too low, what it's like when it's running pretty well, what it's like when it's running high. And remember that amperage setting isn't the only thing that has to be combined with good technique, which comes down to maintaining that nice short arc length, a proper rod angle, and to keep a nice consistent travel speed. Hey, well, thanks so much for tuning in today. If you learned something or enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that thumbs up below or leaving me a comment, and we'll see you next time.